network diagrams explained, illustrating the devices that make up a local network. Now, a variety of symbols may be used to represent component devices or nodes of a network and how they are connected. Network diagrams are also known as network maps. So I'm going to illustrate a variety of symbols that are used within these network diagrams. And I'm showing symbols based on the course specifications for the enterprise computing course. Now, predominantly all of these symbols are from what I've seen from that document, but I have added one extra one as well. I don't know whether the diagrams are going to be specifically limited to the symbols shown in the course specifications, or if you do have to have an idea of what each specific network device could possibly look like going beyond that course specifications, but I'll have multiple videos up and I'll go both ways in the videos to kind of given us that understanding. So I will go through these different symbols as said, okay, of the different devices that can use, be used within networks. One thing to point out too with these diagrams in an exam scenario as well, if you are asked to draw them, symbols do not need to be drawn perfectly. In fact, in many cases, sometimes you can get away with just drawing a box, okay? But what's important is that you annotate these symbols. You actually say, this device is a computer, or you just write computer on that box, or router on another box, okay? And as said as well, other types of devices may also be referred to, and I'm saying that because I'm not sure if it's just limited to these symbols I'm going to show you today. So let's start showing the symbols that are in the course specification. So we get a bit of an idea of these actual devices that are used within networks. I have got other videos out there too that go into more detail explaining what these devices do. So be sure to check them out as well in order to understand about endpoint devices and central nodes and things like that. But let's get started. So firstly, I have a hub, which is a device that can connect multiple computers together. So I can connect multiple devices, usually of the same type, to a hub so that I can make a very small and easy network. Secondly, I have a switch, which is a device that can also connect different devices together, but has multiple communication channels, okay? Meaning that devices can send data specifically to each other on a network, and it usually incorporates many different types of devices when a switch is my central node. I should highlight now too, switch is the actual device I was referring to that wasn't in the course specifications, but I felt it would be wrong to not include it because it is such an important central node device within a network. The third device I'll talk about is that of a router. A router is a device that can send data between networks and usually it does that by a connection to the internet. So a router is the only central node device that can actually connect to the internet and is also the device that is used to make wireless connections to wireless devices. Now you might've already heard me say this uh, word a few times, but these three devices are classified as central nodes. They're usually at the center of a network, but also I should say too, we also use these devices most likely, more likely the switches and routers in combination with one, one another when developing larger networks as well. So just keep that in mind there. The next devices I'll go into are the ones that the users are interacting with to get on the network. So it's things such as a computer, which is a stationary endpoint device, such as a desktop computer, and that most likely needs to be hardwired to a central node in order to have a network connection. We have a laptop, which is a portable endpoint device, such as a MacBook and many other types of laptop devices as well. We have smartphones, such as our Android-based phones and our iPhones, okay, which are, once again, mobile endpoint devices that can be used within networks. And then stemming from that, we have our other branch of mobile devices in that of a tablet, which is a larger mobile endpoint device, such as an iPad. So these four devices here, and I've said the word a few times, they are our endpoint devices, and they're all classified as nodes as well because they're all devices connected to a network. But essentially, users interact with networks through these different types of endpoint devices. Okay, so that's how they may be drawn if you're going to use them in your network diagrams. The final two symbols I sh I'll show relate to connectivity. First one being the internet, which is the largest public network, and it's used to access websites and web-based platforms, and obviously connect networks together through the actual internet. And this internet always needs to be connected to the router, as the router is the only central node that can connect the, a network to the internet. And then the final device is a wireless device, and I'm well aware that's the Bluetooth symbol. I'm going by the course specifications, but it is used for radio communications on a network. Essentially, this symbol also connects to the router because the router is the only device that can offer uh, wireless connections, unless we're talking with a device such as a mobile phone pairing with another device too, which is the traditional Bluetooth sense. But 
if you are talking about connecting wireless devices to a network, you are likely connecting this wireless device to the router symbol and then the wireless devices to this wireless device symbol. That sounds very confusing, but I'm going to illustrate it on this next slide, which I'm going to get to now. So let's have a look at a basic network that could be a simple home network and how it may be set up. So within our home network, we probably only have one device as our central node, and that device is most likely our router. Now, our router gives us a lot of functionality that we may be using it. So firstly, I could be specifically connecting my computer directly to my router through the use of Ethernet cabling. So I can make wired connections there. I can also connect through the radio medium wireless devices to my router by finding the actual transmission channel and logging into the specific network by entering in my network ID and password. And this could allow me to connect devices such as my laptop, but also a tablet as well to the, actually wirelessly connect those devices without cabling to my home network as well. But then also, as said, the main advantage of a router is actually having the internet connection itself. That's why we use a router. So that, that would be a hardwired connection from my actual router to the telecommunications infrastructure within my street, okay, as a part of here in Australia, the NBN network, giving my home that internet access. But that connection to my router and then my other devices connected to my router gives those three devices there an internet connection. So obviously this is a very basic diagram to get you familiar with these network diagrams, but I hope it's given you a bit of an understanding of how these network diagrams work. Essentially, we always need to have a central node in there somewhere for all the devices to connect to. Devices that are hardwired can directly connect to the central node. Okay, but wireless devices usually need to incorporate a router connecting to that Bluetooth symbol to represent a wireless device. Okay, so they can connect to the overall network. But then you could also probably use that symbol as well for pairing between devices as well without the need for a router in certain circumstances too. But look, we'll look at more examples of these diagrams in future videos. Hopefully it's given you an understandable introduction to how these different symbols can be used. As said, this is based on my understanding of the course specifications document as a part of the enterprise computing course. And I do foresee extra symbols being used based on realistic network scenarios, and we'll try to incorporate them into future videos as well.